Desperate times call for desperate measures. So what can we workers get if we take leverage to new levels? I actually think that the corporations wanted this to pass so much that they would have conceded and said, okay, fine, put a UBI in there. A measly thousand bucks a month for all American adults, fine, put it in there, fine. I think they would have conceded on that, I do. I also think you should have slipped in provisions about maybe rent freeze, mortgage freeze. Um, and I think you can, again, I think you could have gotten that in there because they wanted this so bad. The corporatocracy would have given away a lot for this. Instead, you had the left wing leaders cave pretty easily. Now, Again, why did they cave? Because they were afraid of the negative press that they definitely would have gotten. They were afraid of Democratic leadership coming after them. That definitely would have happened. Um, they would have been painted as the bad guy. And in the case of somebody like Bernie, as he's running for president still, I don't think he wanted he wanted to deal with that two weeks of vicious negative press in the middle of a pandemic. So he caved. And then you, of course, had, you know, Ilhan Omar, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, it AOC gave a impassioned speech against the terms of this bill, and then there are reports that she supported it. Now, we don't know for sure because there's a voice vote that went on. It wasn't, you know, and that's what Thomas Massey wanted, get everybody on the record. They didn't do that. Why? They say because of, um, you know, the pandemic, but really I just think they're cowards and they wanted to pass it without any accountability. So where does the movement go from here? Because if you're like me, you're really disillusioned with the fact that our best – leaders, our best politicians. I don't think they were even close to handling this properly. How is left-wing power exerted? That's how it's exerted. From the outside. So a true left-wing leader harnesses the will of the people and throws around the weight of the people and uses your biggest weapon effectively. So, you know, I mean, what happens in a situation where Bernie Sanders acts more like Trump in, in this sense? He goes, because they asked Trump, are you going to support the eventual Republican nominee? And he's like, I'll get back to you. What does Bernie do? Bernie goes out of his way to remind, oh, yes, if it comes down to it, I'll support, you know, I'll support Joe Biden and I'll campaign for him. And of course, Trump is the worst and all that stuff. If you're you're giving up all your leverage up front. You're giving it up up front. Now, you might say, well, Kyle, how do you know that if Bernie throws around his weight and says, what if I take my ball and go home? What if all my supporters stay home? How's that? How do we know that's going to work? Two words, Tea Party. So a lot of powerful shit getting thrown around here by Kyle. He's talking about strikes. He's talking about getting UBI and other things that nobody has wanted to this point. He's talking about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. He's saying that their movements are why they got things done. It's also why they're dead, but we don't want to let that kind of thing discourage us from going forward ourselves. So Jimmy says, I wonder if Bernie Sanders or his campaign will have the courage to organize a rent, mortgage, student loan strike, or use their email list to help organize a general strike. Bernie said yesterday, I support workers who strike, conduct a sick out, or participate in a walk-off to support our collective health and safety amid this pandemic. Period. Whoa. He started with strike. Strike is in bold letters. I support workers who strike. Bernie could wreck the DNC. Bernie could bring the whole country to its knees. And we could help. If food workers and truckers and teachers and everybody who delivers shit could get together and say, we're not going to work until we get Medicare for all. There could be something else. Kyle said in that same video that we have to make our demands very clear and few in number. So we could say we need 2,000 a month until the crisis is over. We could say we need single payer national health care coverage. Or we could pick some kind of loan forgiveness. And that's probably how long the list should be or shorter. But if we all agree and then we stay out until they say, okay, then we've got something. And we did more than just pretend. And we did more than just posture. And we did more than just pout and stay home. 
And I implore everybody else who has a progressive YouTube channel right now to do what I'm doing. Do videos that are critical of your fucking progressive leaders and tell them to start doing shit. You're not doing it yet. I'm doing it. I'm leading the way. Fucking follow. I love all you guys. But you're going to be on my live shows and I'll bust your balls if you don't fucking do it now. So fucking do it now. I'm telling everybody, all my friends, I want you to start doing videos that put pressure on Bernie Sanders and AOC and Ro Khanna and Tulsi Gabbard and fucking the squad and Sherrod Brown and Elizabeth Warren to start fucking doing something and get behind a red strike or because now I finally got Bernie's people to start tweeting about this fucking fucking finally they're talking about the strikes I covered the strikes there's a fucking dozen wildcat strikes I studied they were going on strike Monday Instacart workers went on strike fucking Whole Foods went on yesterday Bernie didn't fucking mention it until today looks like Elizabeth Warren also is jumping on the bandwagon I'm supporting Instacart workers on strike today. They are providing an essential service to those who cannot leave their homes now. They deserve better pay, benefits, and protections. Hashtag Instacart strike. Jimmy's point is that the politicians are moving now because people are putting pressure on them. So it comes down to the fact that we don't care who our leaders are. What it really comes down to is whether we can push them in the direction we need them to go. That's why I started this show. I wanted the viewers to rise up and start shit and get things done in the world. Twitter does have a downstream effect. If Twitter is at the top of the hill, there's a flow downward. The lefty pundits and the lefty followers of the pundits get an idea, and then the mainstream pundits start to get the idea, and then trends start, and then we start to see things happening. The politicians are always the last ones to move because they're always considering damage control. The strike wave is in full swing. Whole Foods workers across the country are staging a mass sick out tomorrow, following strikes today at Instacart and an Amazon warehouse in New York City. Sue Gibson says, I would order groceries today if Instacart would meet workers' demands. So the consumers can put pressure on as well. So the progressive media is not supposed to be a fucking fan club for our elected officials. No kidding. The progressive media is supposed to lead them because we're supposed to lead and they'll follow because they're weak at, be at best. At best, they're feckless. At worst, they're venal. And that's why we have to make them fear us. Fear us. And that's fucking Chris Hedges. You gotta make them fear you, and I'm done fucking sucking up to Bernie Sanders. And that motherfucker better fear us, and he better stand up and vote against shit. And if he's more afraid of getting pissed on by the media, he better be more afraid of getting pissed on by his fucking followers. Because the fucking campaign's over, and the time to get shit done is now. Organize workers, organize a red strike, organize a Morgan strike, and do it fucking now. And he's starting to come around on his fucking timeline, and if everybody else would do it, we would get it there faster. Because guess what they were doing up until today? Fucking nothing. They're giving me emails telling me all the shit they got in the bill. Shame on you! Some of the higher ups in Bernie's campaign were emailing back to Jimmy and telling him things they got in the stimulus bill and Jimmy's calling bullshit on it. That's how big of a pussy of a campaign they ran. And now it's time to stop being a pussy and it's time to start grabbing power and using your leverage of your following to get shit for us right fucking now because they got everything. You motherfucker. Start calling out Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer for negotiating a horrible bill instead of standing on the floor and yelling at Republicans because it's easy and it's cowardly. It's time for a revolution. It's time for a fucking revolution, which starts with a strike, a rent strike, a mortgage strike, That's a, revolution. a student loan strike, a credit card strike. What are you fucking doing? This is my union, APSCUF, State Union of teachers and coaches in the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. Our organization represents the faculty and coaches who have devoted themselves to providing quality higher education for Pennsylvania students. But the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education doesn't give a fuck about students. All they want to do is take the students' money. And students are frustrated. They don't think that online education is what they bargained for or paid for, but we can't close the schools because then the bean counters wouldn't have beans to count. I wonder what would happen, my fellow APSCUF members, if we just didn't turn the grades in at the end of the semester until they told us what was going to go on in the fall semester.
if they made a commitment to protect our jobs in the fall, if they made a commitment to protect our working conditions, even if we're lowly arts and music teachers, even if we're foreign language teachers or philosophy teachers. I only mention APSCUF because we're a union and other unions should join our union and we should all shut things down. We should shut things down until we get answers. The powers have never cared about the plight of the American workers, at least not in the last 40 plus years. Support for Medicare for All in the U.S. surges amid coronavirus pandemic, new poll shows. So if that's the demand, let that be the demand. So let's all decide together that we won't go to work, we won't pay our rent, we won't pay our mortgage, we won't pay our credit card bill or our student loan bill until we get Medicare for All single payer. We're gonna to have to make it known why we're not working. We're gonna to have to go on our social media accounts. We're gonna to have to make them if we don't have them. And we're gonna to have to make it clear to the powers why we're out. And until they make some real progress on getting us Medicare for all single payer, we're not coming back. This moment in history is a perfect time to get this done. We may never have such an opportunity again. Truckers and teachers and food workers, everybody who can cripple the economy, everybody who is essential, let's all work together and get it done. Get on board the Bernier bus train. Come get on board the Bernier bus train. Once you hear that clickety-clack, there ain't no time for turning back. Get on board. The preceding episode can be viewed on the YouTube channel Bernie or Bust Television.